Dragon Age Veilguard is finally upon us and I'll be looking at everything from graphics to writing to see if Veilguard lives up to by our name or if there's maybe not enough to put the game on our goatee lists. If at the end you like the video, please like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. But now let's start out with graphics and performance. The good news is everything runs very smoothly and you don't need a top of the line system to enjoy the game's visuals. I've been running everything you see on a 4060 GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, Ryzen 7 CPU and never had any massive drops in frame rate even with selective ray tracing turned on. Location outside of cities look very pretty and there are some places you can stop and admire the landscape. I say outside of cities because those seem to be slightly worse. There's a good reason for that. The locations overall are very very contained but I'll talk about that problem later on. Characters are marked the lowest here. There's this lingering uncanny valley feeling with them. Something's off. I wouldn't call all of your companions and people you're talking to exactly ugly but the proportions seem very unnatural and bad face animation doesn't help. Overall though, the graphics look pretty good, the effects of magic and combat skills are great and the optimization team can give themselves a pat on the back because the game runs better than most AAA titles I've played this year. Sadly, story and writing is something I can't get over. Let's see why. And it's still with you. Yes, I think so. To the camp. We've still got dozens of veil jumpers unaccounted for. How can we help? There's really no way around it. Writing and dialogue are downright abysmal. Voice actors try their best to make it better, but it just doesn't work, at least not for a Dragon Age game. Previous titles all dealt with dark themes and morally grey characters, and all of this is missing in Veilguard. Here it seems like the characters are worried about saying something wrong and being sent to HR sensitivity training if they do. Along with that, the dark undertones are completely gone or ignored. For example, elves were always seen as lesser beings, fit only for slaves, if even that. When you played as an elven character, you got treated differently. In Dragon Age Origins, my first interaction with a human outside of the circle of the mages was get to work, knife ears, and then him apologizing when he realized I'm not a slave. That was the first hour of the game. In Veilguard, being an elf doesn't do anything, it's basically just a visual and the lore is being ignored, seemingly because the writers didn't want to offend anyone. In turn, we get very curated dialogue which doesn't leave a lot of space for any character to be fleshed out or to stand out. This extends to the player character where your mean dialogue choices are anything but and you cannot roleplay as an anti-hero, let alone being evil, which sometimes is very fun to do in RPG games. What I'm saying is, the roleplaying element of Veilguard is too limited by the writing. It feels like a huge missed opportunity with the story being about ancient elven gods being loose, with elves being mistreated for so long and now their gods being back. I'd take the story at least partly into the direction of elven rebellion and exploring darker themes, with Blight being interwoven in the story and giving the player options to maybe destroy or aid the imprisoned gods or even Solas, which was supposed to be the main antagonist before they changed it. Instead we got extremely watered down writing and story which fails to show the world is in grave danger. There's a lot of talk about the worst blight ever, but honestly, while playing through the game, you rarely get the feeling it's as bad as everyone says it is. There's a few moments where it comes close, but for the most part, the game doesn't show the dire situation we're supposedly in, it relies more on people saying it, which doesn't work, not just because of writing, but because it's very rarely seen and as players we're supposed to see a lot of the bad things happening. In Origins, we saw the battle and burned cities, in Inquisition, we saw the veil breaches, here we sometimes see the effects of the blight and even then it leaves much to be desired. It really is a missed opportunity because the premise of Veilguard is interesting and could be made into an enticing story. It just never does and mostly the dialogue just feels like an endless exposition. And I mean endless. 
But that's not the worst yet. The biggest offense in writing is how you as a player are treated. Sometimes I felt like the writers thought everyone is suffering from Alzheimer's because the characters constantly kept saying what I already know. Yes, I know the gods escaped. Yes, I know they're supposedly causing mayhem and I definitely know how many crystals are left to break to solve the puzzle. It becomes very jarring, especially while questing. The hand-holding is just too much. I'm pretty sure the vast majority of players will know what happened on the screen a few seconds ago without my party telling me the door opened right over there or we're being attacked by a large demon. Sometimes silence speaks volumes. It may sound I'm being overly critical of the writing, but this is a Dragon Age game, not Dragon's Dogma, where pawns pointing out obvious things is part of the game's charm. Bioware is known for their excellent narratives, and if it's not up to the standards, I can't pretend it is. But let's check if gameplay and combat can make up for it. I'll start with combat, which for the most part isn't bad, the abilities have a nice punch to them, and while it is more action-oriented than the previous titles, seen especially in the way you can or cannot control your companions, I mostly enjoy the combat, with one flaw being the sponginess of your enemies on higher difficulties. The best way to describe combat is Mass Effect-like, which may seem as if it doesn't belong in Dragon Age game, but it works and the ultimates are very very fun to use. However, the other gameplay elements are lacking. For me, RPG games need some level of exploration and learning from your own mistakes, and Veilgar doesn't have that. For the most part, the locations are extremely contained. There's only a few twists and turns at the end of which you'll find some loot, but you can't wander off and explore the map for yourself, very similar to Dragon Age 2 where you really can't do much outside of Kirkwall. It almost seems like the criticism of Hinterlands from a previous game was taken to an extreme because there is no real activities to do outside of doing quests and progressing the story. It's all very bare bones. Even the loot is underwhelming, mostly you'll find it in chests, the mob sometimes drops some materials or trinkets you can sell. Another thing is, there's not really any life in the game. This is especially true for the cities, because the contained nature of the game makes them look like a place where you have to go to do your quest, and not as a living, breathing city. Yes, there are people, but they seem more like background extras and not as people living in the city. I may be in the minority here, but lively hubs in RPG games are a must for me, and Veilgard just doesn't have it. We get the lighthouse, which serves the purpose of you talking to your companions and upgrading gear, which again is very bare bones and there's no real crafting system, but I'd love a city where I can go to just relax for a moment, maybe play a minigame or just talk to the locals who react to decisions I made in the game. Last but not least, the puzzles. Those suffer from the same ailment as the dialogue, where the developers treat us like we're toddlers just discovering shapes. The game doesn't need puzzles which only Mensa members can solve, but find the wisp right next to the door, line up the shields and break the crystals in correct order is… kind of insulting. At least give us some challenge. Next up, sound and music. Got your target? Yes. The job's done. Smells like blood. But if the gods really did get out, they're not here anymore. Music is good for the most part, of course it's not at the level of Origins, but it would be unfair to compare anything to songs like In Utenera, which is probably one of the best soundtrack in the games. Ever. In Veilgard, the music serves its purpose. Some tracks are pretty good. For me, one of the combat themes stood out, and I'd listen to that one outside of the game too. Sound is good, voice acting for the most part is great, as it usually is with Bioware games, and the sound effects in combats are on the same level. But is the game worth buying now? That would have made 
things worse. In my opinion, Dragon Age Veilguard is a missed opportunity for Bioware. With the extensive lore and fleshed out world already there, Veilguard fails to add to it. There is just too much missing from the game and it feels very empty at times. While the combat is good, the events leading up to it seem too much on the rails, walk a bit, listen to companions pointing out the obvious or have a very HR approved banter, fight a few enemies, rinse and repeat until the quest is over. Combine that with really bad writing, which doesn't get better at the later stages and you can see how Veilguard just isn't good enough for a Dragon Age game. It's fun in some places, but just when I was beginning to actually enjoy the game, I was immediately brought down again into what I can best describe as mediocrity and emptiness of Veilguard. If this was a first entry in a completely new IP which would lay out the world and the lore, it could maybe work. With better writing and story it could definitely work, even with the constraints put on the game. Without any of it, I currently cannot recommend it at a full price. And I wish I could, because Bioware needed a win. But we're left waiting for Mass Effect 5. I'm going to leave you with some recommendations. Outside of the obvious choice in Baldur's Gate 3, I'd say go for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, especially if you like more action-oriented combat. The game is a lot of fun, and even though the story is very very cliché, the world and the people you meet in it are a blast. My last recommendation is a huge curveball, but I'd recommend a 2D gothic-like Drova the Forsaken Kin. While it has a slightly unfortunate title, there's a lot to uncover in the world of Drova and you're completely free to explore wherever you want. Drova doesn't hold your hand at all. It doesn't even bother with quest markers, so you better pay attention when talking to people and it boasts about 25 to 40 hours of gameplay depending on how much secrets you want to uncover. So that's it for my review, what did you think about Dragon Age Veilguard? Comment down below, even if you think I'm completely wrong, subscribe if you liked the video, until next time, Goblin out. Bye!